How y'all do tonight? Yes, good. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, I apologize if I seem awkward up here. I'm used to having a guitar and a little bit of whiskey in me. Um, I want to start off by telling you guys a story. It's, uh, as, as you guys heard, I'm a transplant here. So I came out here in 11 years old, had not worked my way into the music side of my life yet. I always wanted to do it. It was a dream. Um, but as I got older, when I was uh, 23, I started playing music here in town. And I started out with uh, the idea that I needed to sound a certain way. I needed to be a certain thing, play certain songs, have a, uh, um, I don't know how to explain it, maybe a, like a commercial feel about myself. And I toiled away for three years in local bars here in town with <laughs> really empty bars. Uh, my first... My very first gig, I think I played to, I started out with three people. I ended up with no one in the bar. Um, the second gig started out with 12 people, ended with no one in the bar. And then uh, my third gig, my parents finally came out, and they stayed <laughs> for most of the show. And then they had to go home, too, because they have jobs. At least that's what they told me. This was a Saturday night. Uh, so... <laughs> But I, I uh, so I, I, I plugged around town for three years and slowly built a small following of friends and family. And I don't know if they were there because they enjoyed the music or because they felt bad for me. Because I was, I was uh, working my way through uh, the music not as myself. I was... When I was playing a Kenny Chesney song, I was trying to be Kenny Chesney. If I was playing Garth Brooks, I was trying to be Garth Brooks. And uh, one night I'm sitting in a bar here in town called the Cow Pony. Uh, I used to work there as a bouncer. I know I'm a small guy for a bouncer, but uh, they let me do it anyway. Um, so I'm playing there one night, and the owner of the bar says, Hey, when are you going to start singing this song the way you sound? And I go, well, This is the way I sound. He goes, No, no. When are you going to start singing this song the way you sound? And so I started belting the song out. And I went from trying to sound like somebody to sounding like me. And, and there's a very interesting feeling that comes along with that. There's a peace. There's a, I don't, I want, don't want to say calm. There's a confidence that comes over you. And it didn't sound good then either. I mean, it wasn't like it just started sounding great right away. It was, uh, but it was something that I knew I could, I could improve on. It was something I could recreate that was my sound. That was something very specific to me. And um, so, you know, six years later, after doing that, you know, I'm 20, 28, 29 years old at the time, I started branching out of Tucson. And I'm playing in little bars, clubs, venues all around the state. And I come across other musicians. And it, here's a crazy thing about Tucson. The, the, uh, in Tucson and Arizona in general, we are a very, very talented melting pot of artists. You have um, mariachis that we heard tonight that were, that were great. Uh, people like Roger, myself. Uh, all this talent that is not the same. But there's one thing in common. We have... We all grew up in this environment, this community. And uh, this community, ba it's, it's an odd community. You go to Texas, you go to other states, and you have a very fervent um, listen, listenership. You have a crowds of people who love music, who will travel miles upon miles upon miles. Arizona, we are, we are very much homebodies. If you're not coming to our town... If you're not coming to our side of town, our side, of, not even our town, our side of town, especially in two songs, we don't have any freeways, um, we're not going to go that far, you know, because we got to get home for the 10 o'clock news <laughs> and do things in the morning, like my parents would say when they left my shows. Um, but <laughs> what, what this has brought to the Arizona attitude and, and the line of the scene I speak of is you get to that point where you say, for lack of a better term, here's who I am. You are going to like this or you're not going to like this. 
I'm going to show up. I'm going to do what I do. And if, if you don't want to be a part of it, I'm going to play. I'll play those two people. Or I'll play the 200 people. And, it, and because of that, we have built this community and attitude that it has uh, bled out of the state. Uh, people, I've been lucky enough to be traveling the last two years, play all over the country. And uh, you, you'll talk to someone and go, hey, where are you from? I'm from Arizona. Oh, <laughs> it's pretty rough out there, huh? And it is. It's, it's a hard place to operate, a hard place to grow. But you know what? They know that because you're there, because you've made it to that point, that you have this attitude, you have this ability, this confidence, this unique uniqueness that is so hard to find, but even harder to find here because just like, just like the weather here, we don't get a lot of rain. We, we don't have a lot of... Uh, we don't have a lot of nourishment because there's not the venues aren't there the the people aren't always there because no one goes outside when it's 110 degrees whether I'm playing in an air conditioned place or not no one wants to get in the car and drive there when it's 110 degrees so what Arizona has become is it's its own it's a persona it's a we walk on stage with hey here's who I am if you like it great I'm I'm happy you're here if you don't like it, I'm going to make you like me. And if you don't like me, please leave. <laughs> like, uh, that's, that's we, we are very passionate about what we do. And, uh, and it's, it's really, it, it, it's, you can see that in the people that come around from the state. There is no one here that doesn't love what they do. The, and there's passion in music everywhere you go. But the passion here, you bleed. You, you continually bleed your passion because from the day you start playing in Arizona to the day you stop playing in Arizona, you're working. You're always working. And I, and I get that most people do that, but you're tr we're trying to pump water out of an oil tank here. And it, it's, it's really a, it really turns us into great, hardworking musicians that really appreciate what they have. So if you guys don't mind, we'll play a couple songs for you tonight. Um, this is my first time playing for you guys tonight, so please be kind. And if you don't, if you don't like it, you can leave. I did, uh, so I wrote this song about uh, actually driving home from playing a show out here in, in actually Three Points, which is the mecca of music <laughs> in Arizona. This song is called White Horse. Hope you all enjoy it. You wanted a white horse that I had no for with holes in the floorboard. You can see the street, the glass slippers and crown, the queen of this town. You were looking down on a boy like me. You never thought I could make you smile. I stole your heart for a little while. Your sins to set you free. So, how does a boy like me get a girl like you? Once in a lifetime, a dream come true. You wanted a priest charming, but I was nowhere to be found. Cause there ain't no wide hole. This one horse town. Me and my forty thieves couldn't steal your heart, make you stay. You took your dreams and you got some in you. You drove away. 
So how does a boy like me get a girl like you? For once in a lifetime, a dream come true. So how does a boy like me? Like you, once in a lifetime, a dream come true. You wanted a preach charming, but I was nowhere to be found. There ain't no white horse, there ain't no white horse in this one horse town. Thank you all so much. Thank you, TEDx. Thank you, Miss Mary. My name is Drew Cooper. Thank you so much.